But not all of them are capable of adapting. Some of the orangutans that were taken from the arms of their dead mothers now do not know what they are. Like Tarzans in reverse, they don't feel entirely at home in either of the two worlds. When they return to the jungle, they don't know what to do until they feel hungry and return to the only home they know, their cage. Fortunately, this happens less and less, and the majority of orphans of Sepilok manage to adapt to their new green home. Little by little, they recognize tastes, smells, and textures that carry them further and further from the rehabilitation center, which, with luck, they will forget forever. cover their biological identity by eating their way through the jungle and passing one by one the tests in their particular botanical studies. One day, looking down, they see not tourists, but hairy rhinoceroses. And on that day, the Red Spirit has finally found the heart of his jungle, the place where he belongs. But it's useless trying to rescue orangutans or any other animal if the place they are to return to is rapidly disappearing from the face of the earth. Fewer and fewer trees are allowed to grow to 80 meters high. All living beings, both animals and plants, are made up of carbon. And as the rainforests are home to enormous quantities of life, they contain enormous quantities of this element. Carbon escapes into the atmosphere in the form of carbon dioxide when we burn petrol in the cities. This then accumulates and causes the planet to heat up. The only way of reducing the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere in the short run is the existence of trees. Trees, as they grow, absorb carbon dioxide and incorporate the carbon into their cells. We need to plant more trees. In Borneo, there are people who are doing precisely that. In an unequal struggle, they attempt to compensate for the trees that are lost. In their own nurseries, they cultivate the young trees of the broadleaf species that have most suffered. When they have grown sufficiently and they have been checked for diseases, an area of former jungle that has now been invaded by grasses is cleared and the sapling is planted in a place where it'll have a chance to survive. Then all that's left is to wait in the hope that one day it'll become one of those giants in which orangutans nest. In this way, hundreds of hectares of former jungle have been already recovered. Jungle that had been torn down by man and which otherwise would be incapable of regenerating itself once the monsoon rains have washed away the unprotected fertile soil. Despite the enormous efforts of some governments and associations, the pace of reforestation can never keep up with the destruction unless everyone works together and with a well-defined plan. There is still time to save the Indonesian rainforests if we put a stop to unchecked tree felling and illegal trade in tropical woods. 
These woods are unfortunately in fashion in the West where the curiously named colonial furniture is very popular because it is cheap. The forests that create the clouds are also important in themselves. Even if they weren't vital to regulate the climate of the planet, even if they did not absorb carbon from the atmosphere, even if they did not feed water into the sea itself, they would still have the right to continue existing, along with the incredible creatures that live there. No one knows how much we still have to learn from them nor how many remedies for our diseases lie hidden there, in forms that are genetically irreplaceable and whose biochemical processes still have much to teach us. Saving a few monkeys is not just a sentimental fashion. The orangutan is a symbol of the tropical rainforest itself, a place richer in life than any other on the planet. They are the guardians of our health as a species. They taught us where we came from and have until now always been there. It's simply a question of listening to the message brought to us by the clouds from the green heart of the jungle of the Red Spirit. <laughs>